If you're like most women, you've never been told the truth about men and dating. Most dads don't have this kind of conversation with their daughters, and most brothers, sadly, are not aware or insightful enough to tell it like it is. So if you've struggled in relationships with men more than you'd like to, I'd love to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you in this video where I share seven additional crucial distinctions about men that I'd share with you if you were my sister. This way you can stop wasting time and attract a man who loves you and values you the way you deserve. If you're watching this video, I don't have to share with you how painful, frustrating, confusing the dating world is today. So my hypothesis is you haven't had a man share with you, here's how it works, here's how men think, Here's how men show up when they really want someone. Let's translate behaviors into something that's really understandable so you, with more data, can make better decisions regarding who's the right guy for you and who you should move away from. A few months ago, I created the first part of this video, a video titled Seven Crucial Lessons on Men I'd Share If You Were My Sister. That video has been watched over 230,000 times as the recording of this and also struck a really strong chord. I've received so many messages from amazing women, courageous women, who are sharing a version of, thank you so much for sharing this, sharing their life experience, but also saying, what more can I do? So what I decided to do today is, obviously there's more than seven things I can share with you, but for purposes of time, I, that's what I did in that video. I'm gonna link it up in the description in case you wanna watch it. I'm recording seven new, fresh, additional distinctions and truths about men that can really save you time and enable you to be in a much more fulfilling and long-lasting relationship if you step into them. The first new truth about men I'll share today is that his ability to wait for physical connection and for sex with you reveals his true values. Another way of saying that is when a guy is willing to wait to have sex, wait to get physical with you, it's more than the act itself. Why? It shares at least Three things with him, not in words, not in his charisma, not in what he's promising you, but in action. Truth number one he's revealing to that is, I am willing to invest in emotional connection first because I'm looking for a longer term relationship. If what I want is a weekend fling or to get it off with someone, then I'm not gonna wanna wait, why? It's too much investment for something that's short term. But if I want something long term, I'm willing to put in my actions and my consistency before I reap the rewards of a physical connection with someone. Second thing he's sharing with you that way is that he is conscious enough to understand, my dear sister, that the risk in physical connection with a guy you don't know is exponentially higher for you than it is for him. He's willing to say, I know that the risk is higher for you. I mean, think about from pregnancy to physical abuse. So he's saying, hey, I want to do things right, give you the space and the safety you need to vet me properly, to understand if there's compatibility, to have me develop emotional connection with you before I'm willing to go that distance. Third thing he's sharing with you with that single action is that he can delay gratification. Why is this crucially important to you? Because if you're looking for a relationship, that's not just going to be a six-month relationship. It's going to stand the test of time. You want someone who can invest emotionally. You want someone who's willing to say, I'm willing to sacrifice now for more later. If you can't delay gratification, you can't start a business, you can't start a family, you're going to be really flying by the seat of your pants instead of investing emotionally and rationally on things that may be a little harder at the beginning, but will reap emotional and physical and even financial rewards down the line. The second lesson I share with you, viewer, my sister, is that men will treat you in direct proportion to your true self-worth. Here's what I mean. True self-worth means not what you write in your journal, not what you tell yourself, not what you tell your girlfriends even, but what you are willing to step up to and show up in action. So for example, if in your mind, you're someone who deserves respect, someone who deserves dignity, and when you connect with men, men don't treat you with respect, don't treat you with dignity, and you stay connected with them, you stay in a relationship with them, all that says is that the actualized self-worth is not what you think, but what you're doing with him. So if you're someone who really, if you're honest with yourself, has a lower sense of worth on actions than you do in your mind, we need to work on that first before you go into the next relationship. We need to work on that first before you continue connecting with men. Why? Because if you do that, 
guys will show up differently with you than they do with other women. So if you have high standards, not impossible, but high standards, if you have a set of boundaries that are healthy, if you're willing to express your truth and your needs, then what happens is men who may have otherwise taken you for granted show up stronger, show up with more respect, show up with more admiration. Why? Because they understand, they feel your sense of worth. It's not something you're talking about. It's something that you're showing through your being. Third truth about men I would share if you were my sister is to only date men who know where they're taking you. In other words, if you know what you want, dating someone who is ambiguous or unaware of what he's looking for is asking for a disaster. It's really a recipe for pain and for hurt and for suffering. So what does this mean? This means that if you're looking for marriage, only date men who know want marriage and are willing to date that way. If you're looking for life partnership, but not marriage, only date men who are looking for life partnership, who are open to not getting married, but really want something much more powerful than just getting companionship for the moment. Why? Because if you connect with men who are confused about what they want, if you connect with men who aren't really expressing what it is they're looking for, you're going to find yourself feeling more and more attached to them. And when the moment comes where you're asking for more, He's going to basically act stupid and say, well, we've never talked about this and I only want something short term and I'm coming from a long relationship and you don't understand my financial situation. So he's going to basically play a bunch of excuses that could have been really vetted several months ago on the first date, even before the first date. The next truth I'd share with you, viewer, my sister, is that if you cannot walk away, he will take you for granted. That doesn't mean you have to walk away. That means you need to have the intrinsic feeling that at any moment in time, even if it's painful, even if it's something that is not what you really want in your heart, but necessary, you are willing to walk away. Why? Because a man needs to understand that he needs not just choose you once and you're there for life. He needs to choose you every single day, sometimes consistently, multiple times in a single day. Why? Because men will treat you in direct proportion as I shared before, of your self-worth, but also in direct proportion to how you show up for yourself, what options you have. If you have no options, then he can treat you however you want. But if he knows that if he's not stepping up his game, you will leave him, then he's far more willing to not just be in his base behavior, because that's something that's temporary, but to act in a way where that is his nature. That is the way he shows up in life. It's a transformational type of being versus just doing. And if there's guys who cannot be with you that way, if there's guys who don't understand you can walk away and they don't treat you with a level of closeness, with a level of care, then you should walk away. Now, before I share my last three points, which are really important, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware or not aware at all of the root cause, not the symptom, why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every kind of challenging situation you can imagine to create long-lasting, fulfilling relationships at the test of time. And I put together the findings in a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds. So if you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the elusive question, why you're still single. And a cost report based on your specific blind spot that's going to share with you the number one thing you can do based on what your challenge is to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Fifth truth about men, I'd share with you my sister, is that men need more admiration than they're willing to share. So why is this important? Well, you can say, well, isn't that insecurity? Isn't that a need to validate yourself through somebody else? You can call it that, but it's the truth. In similar ways to how you might need safety and emotional connection, he's going to need to feel admired by the woman he's loving and sacrificing for. So two things. A, do not be with a man you don't admire. If you connect with a guy, you find him cute, attractive, fun, but you don't admire him, do not be with him. Why? Because he has that such a strong need. He's going to find that need met through somebody else if it's not you. If you don't admire him, don't be with him. Two, if you admire him, be courageous and vulnerable enough to share it. Not just, I admire you, but why do you admire him? Because it's going to be so important to him. When he hears it from you, the woman he loves, the woman he's stepping up for, he's going to feel far more committed to you than if he doesn't hear it. The sixth truth I share if you were my sister is that is if he's the type of guy who is closed off to getting help and to specific learnings about relationship, your future relationship is doomed. What do I mean by that? You need to have conversations before you become exclusive with someone that clearly lets you know that if there's some moment in time where the relationship needs help, that he's willing to raise his hand and say, let me have a professional 
help us that if he's suffering in his own life, instead of just winging it or white knuckling it, he needs to be humble enough to get help from professional. Why? Because otherwise you're at the mercy of somebody who might be going through mental challenges slash mental health and trying to help himself in ways that he can't. I can't tell you how many women I've connected with who are in very painful situations and when the guy's presented with the option of getting help, he's like, no, I don't need that. I don't believe in that. If he doesn't believe in that, but what he's doing isn't serving him, the only possible result is more of the same. The seventh truth about men I'll share with you, if you're my sister, is that men who are good, committed, connected, honest, are eager to sacrifice on your behalf. They want to be your hero. They want to do something that makes your life easier and better, even if it costs them in some way. But in order for him to do that, there's a part of him that needs to be activated. He's gonna have to understand your needs, which is something very vulnerable to share. He's gonna need to experience vulnerability from you, and he's going to need to understand your true feelings, meaning if you're upset, but you're really sad, yeah, I'm the upset or anger, be willing to say I'm really sad or I'm really disappointed instead of I'm just pissed. He needs to get the feeling of vulnerability from you or he won't be able to go one tenth of the way with you in terms of expressing, sacrificing, making your life better. Those are the seven things I wanted to share with you today, but I have one more bonus one. And this is something that goes for both sexes, obviously, but for you right now, if you're someone who's under the illusion that you want a guy to fall deeply and madly in love with you, but you're not in love with your life, it's an illusion, it won't happen. So one of the first things you can do right now, if you're in this transition of having been with someone who's not good for you, but you want someone who's better, you need to fall in love with your life. You need to fall in love with the things that make you happy, fulfill, sustain. Only then are you a true match to someone who falls madly in love with you. Hope this is helpful, insightful, and useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me, because this is the way I can grow and reach more women if you click like and subscribe. And if you want to know how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.